check this out. With a PCB sensor that costs $1 and a 15 cent magnet, we're able to detect joystick position, linear slide position, and rotary position. Hi everyone, my name is Roman Kozak, CTO and co-founder of Verdi. At Verdi, we design hardware and software products for agriculture. In my spare time, I also make YouTube videos about interesting engineering topics. In today's video, we will be looking at some of the cool applications of a 3D magnetic sensor. Infineon is a manufacturer of these magnetic sensors and offers some excellent resources online, such as design manuals, um, application circuits, um, and a whole bunch of other resources. So I'll be referencing those throughout the video. You can find the links in the description. This sensor can detect the position and the movement of a magnet in 3D space. It does this with three Hall Effect probes, each probe along one axis of the sensor. The Hall probes measure the magnetic flux density. This means that if you have a magnet attached to a ball and socket, a linear slider, or a rotary shaft, the position and the, the speed, etc., of those mechanical components in the system can be known. A 3D magnetic sensor provides a contactless position sensing alternative to solutions that traditionally relied on things like a potentiometer or optics to determine position. Let's jump right into the first application of this 3D magnetic sensor, which is a joystick. As you can see here in Onshape, I've put together a joystick, which consists of a ball and socket, and a printed circuit board that has the Infineon 3D magnetic sensor on it. And this circuit board I actually designed in Altium, which is the world's most widely used printed circuit board design solution, as well as uh, the sponsor of this video. So definitely go check out the free trial link in the description below to support this channel. They make it really easy to share your printed circuit board 3D files with CAD programs like SOLIDWORKS and soon to be supported on shape. So the traditional analog design of a joystick consists of two potentiometers where complex mechanics are used to convert X and Y stick movement into two axis rotation. Some joysticks use an additional potentiometer for a Z axis activated by rotating the stick itself. Bringing one more potentiometer into the joystick, it, it just adds complexity. Whereas one 3D magnetic sensor can detect all three axes and bring more precise results. With this sensor, the lifetime of the joystick functionality is extended and more options for future games and industrial implementations of the joystick are possible with this new precision as well as uh, kind of durability over time. So the Hall Effect joystick has several advantages versus the potentiometer joystick. It has no moving parts that will become worn over time and also the tactical feeling uh, can be designed by mechanical interface. So if you want to add resistance to joystick movement, you can just integrate a spring, for example, into your joystick hardware. Um, and also the 3D magnetic joystick is gonna be just far more precise than your traditional analog sensor. So this joystick works by reading the X, Y, and Z magnetic flux values in milliteslas from the 3D magnetic sensor. Then these X, Y, and Z values are converted into polar coordinates. And in that polar coordinate system, we're able to deduce the position of the joystick relative to the magnetic sensor. So we're able to figure out the values for theta, for phi, um, as well as r. And with all of these, we're able to figure out the position of the joystick. Uh, the calculations are actually quite simple, and these calculations would be done on your microcontroller. Let's take a look at the second application for this 3D magnetic sensor, and that's a slider. This slider can be used uh, in climate control systems, for example, in your car or your home, um, or it can be used um, for slider volume control in mixing consoles, um, or pretty much anywhere else where a slider is required 
or where you want to measure the linear movement of something. Um, so I can think of some pretty cool applications and you might be able to as well. So as you slide the magnet from left to right over the 3D magnetic sensor, this is what values you would see coming out of the sensor. Now we actually have to pair the x-axis and the z-axis measurements together in order to gain a um, linear slide measurement over the full range of this slider. Just because the x-axis and the z-axis have limitations if read together, for example, or, or if read individually, for example, the x-axis is only linear over a small amount, and the z-axis is symmetrical, so it'd be impossible to distinguish whether the magnet is on the left side of the, the 3D magnetic sensor or on the right side. And this is done by using um, ATAN or ATAN2 function to combine the X and Z axis measurements in order uh, to get a nice linear um, distance value out. Uh, there's also a linearization factor K, which is introduced. So as you can see, their um, Infineon in one of their application guides offers two solutions for what the air gap should be, what mag what the magnet should be, um, and what um, function you should use, either ATAN or ATAN2, based on whether you are looking for a, a uh, high precision solution uh, or a high range solution. So the higher the range you want, you're going to be trading off the precision of that slider. Let's take a look at the third application of this 3D magnetic sensor, which is a knob. Now, this knob has uh, a lot of applications. You know, it could be used in a simple volume knob. It can be used in uh, a washing machine where you need to rotate the knob and then push in or pull out to select that um, actual cycle. So yeah, this knob application not only can detect rotation, but it can also detect whether the knob is being pushed in or pulled out. Because as you push in or pull out the knob, it changes the distance that the magnet is away from the sensor, and you would be able to pick up that change in the z-axis of a 3D magnetic sensor. The knob features a diametrically magnetized magnet, which is kind of necessary for it to determine the rotation of the magnet as well because there you have the north and south axes rotating above the magnet and this calculation to figure out how much the knob has rotated is actually similar almost to the joystick you can think of it almost like a joystick that is locked in the vertical position but is still allowed to rotate on that z-axis. So we'll still need to convert the x, y, and z values of the knob into polar coordinates. And, uh, but we'll, we'll almost only be interested in, in the angle phi, and we would not expect the angle theta to move much. So the angle phi, it's calculated from the x and y coordinate values, and that is going to translate into the rotation of the knob, whereas um, we would be able to detect if the knob is pushed in or pulled out based on the uh, R value, which is the radius from the magnet um, to the magnetic sensor. And the final application of this 3D magnetic sensor that I want to show off today is a flow meter. So it works in a similar fashion to the knob in that it's able to detect rotational movement because inside the flow meter, you can see that there's a turbine that rotates. And as the turbine rotates, the diametrically magnetized ring magnet that sits on that turbine and rotates with that turbine will rotate above the 3D magnetic sensor. So you can just think of the flow meter um, as a rotary knob, except instead of a user rotating it, um, it's the flow of the water that rotates it. And we're able to translate the rotation of the turbine into a flow rate, uh, for example, liters per minute, by using, by counting the uh, amount of turns that happen um, in each second. 
Thanks so much for watching, and let me know what you think by liking this video and leaving a comment down below. This video was made possible by the enthusiastic and generous support of Altium. If you're a beginner looking to design your first printed circuit board, an engineering student, or a professional using a different CAD package, Altium makes it very simple to learn and to switch to. And they're the most widely used printed circuit board design solution in industry and academia. Companies like Boeing even use Altium. And if you haven't used Altium in several years, come back and check out their uh, new redesign and integrations with uh, CAD programs like SOLIDWORKS um, and soon to be Onshape as well. Um, and Altium also has this new online collaboration tool that's really cool called Altium 360. So come check it out. Um, links for a trial um, are down below and that will really support the channel um, and that would be great. Thank you.